Hello and thank you for taking the time to watch this video about the Salfeld Child Control application. We're going to give you some valuable tips today for using the application. The Child Control application uses the existing Windows users, so there's no need to spend time reconfiguring more users within the application. I'm going to select Peter from the drop-down and we'll have a look at his time limits. A very popular question that comes up often is, which time limit is in effect? The simple answer to this is the shortest time limit is always in effect. The timer configured for the shortest duration is always the one that's ticking down, deducting time from the daily, weekly, and monthly allowance. In this example, it's always the three and a half hour timer that's ticking away and deducting time both from its daily allotment and also once that's reached, the weekly and then of course the monthly. Internet time limits are based on the programs that are found under the internet rollup in the program section. Time is not counted on a per program basis. If any of the entries in this list are running, their time is deducted. If it appears that more time is being spent surfing the internet than was configured, check to make sure your browsers are listed under internet programs. There is also the possibility that a program like Outlook is listed. Outlook can run all the time and could be the culprit if you're seeing time being deducted too quickly or unexpectedly. You may run into the situation where your child asks for an extension to their internet usage. Rather than going back into the application and reconfiguring it, you can use a TAN number to extend it easily and quickly. A TAN is like a gift card for PC or internet time you hold in your pocket as one of these numbers. If someone requests more time, you don't have to go back into the application and reconfigure it. You can simply provide them a TAN. Another time-saving feature of child control is the ability to copy the settings from one user and apply them to another. This can be extremely useful if you're trying to establish a base configuration or you've found that one particular configuration seems to work well. To do so is just a simple matter of edit copy from the original user, switch to the destination user, and edit paste. And save your changes. The process for sharing configuration between workstations is very similar. File, save. Here you're saving the configuration of the workstation. It can be saved to a network drive or perhaps a USB stick and then opened from there. This way, when you have a configuration that is working as expected or you want to configure other PC's configurations based on a master template, it's very easy to do so and helps you be consistent and confident that all your PCs are protected equally. To load the saved configuration in the destination PC or workstation, it's simply a matter of going to File Open, selecting the file you saved previously, and click on Open. The stored configuration will be loaded and you'll be asked if you want to save the new configuration. Another common question we get is how to change your password. This is very straightforward. You simply go to Edit, Change Password, and enter your new password. The password dialog that appears when you start Child Control has a Forget Password option. If you would like to remove this option, it's simply a matter of leaving the email field here blank. After that, the link won't appear on your password dialog, which is an additional small level of security as the administrator. If you think child control is affecting the performance of a game or application, it's simple to troubleshoot. First, disable child control completely by selecting File, Stop Monitoring from the menu. If the application or game is now behaving normally, it means child control is trying to manage that application. If the application is still not working, you know that child control is probably not the root of the issue. An alternate approach to removing child control as a suspect in the mystery is to add the application to the exclusions list, here. If you know the name of the application, you can enter it directly without having to navigate to it. Another option that child control gives you for preventing tampering is to be able to hide the icon that appears in the taskbar, here. 
To do this, under Settings, go to the General tab and select No Icon in System Tray, and the icon will not be visible to the user. If you used the Tray icon to access the application previously, now that it's invisible, it's simply a matter of using Child Control's hotkey, which is Control shift f 6 to start the application settings. It's also a very good idea to go to the Internet tab and select Synchronize Time with the Internet. This will ensure that people aren't manually adjusting the PC's clock. And finally, if you suspect that your children are somehow getting around the controls in place, go to the Log Files and under Details, from the drop-down choose History Child Control. You'll see each time someone has entered the settings program and what was changed. Perhaps your child has figured out your password? Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We enjoyed making it for you. We've worked hard to make sure your child's internet experience is a safe and pleasant one.